This is VOA News. I'm Gene Randall. Deadly shelling has broken out again in disputed Kashmir a day after an Indian pilot captured by Pakistan in its zone of Kashmir was handed back to India. India says a mother and two children were killed by Pakistani attacks. For its part, Pakistan says Indian military forces have killed one person and wounded three. The U.S. and South Korea are expected to announce they will scale back their annual large-scale joint military exercises. Media reports quoting unnamed U.S. defense officials say the announcement is expected in the coming days and that the move could be designed as a good-faith gesture to keep nuclear talks with North Korea alive following the failed Hanoi summit and to address President Trump's often stated concerns over the cost of the exercises. The aborted U.S.-North Korean meeting this week is still the focus of a lot of attention here in the United States, much of it aimed at President Trump, the parents of an American college student who died after being released from North Korean captivity, have condemned the president's praise of Kim Jong-un and Mr. Trump's willingness to accept the dictator's assurances that he only learned of Otto Warmbier's fate after the fact. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani has a report. Fred and Cindy Warmbier are rebuking President Trump after he said yesterday he didn't think Kim Jong-un was aware of their son Otto's alleged mistreatment. He tells me that he didn't know about it, and I will take him at his word. The Warmbier said they stayed silent while the president was meeting with Kim in Vietnam, but now must speak out. In a written statement, they say Kim and his evil regime are responsible for Otto's death, and no excuses or lavish praise can change that. Otto Warmbier died two years ago after being returned to the U.S. in a vegetative state. Sagar Magani, Washington. To keep up with all the day's news, we invite you to go online to voanews.com or use the VOA News mobile app. This is VOA News. The Islamic State's self-declared caliphate in Syria may soon be no more. U.S.-backed forces are poised to take the last remnants in the northeast village of Baguz. The final assault began just a day after a Syrian Democratic Forces spokesman predicted that Baguz would be liberated within a week. Meanwhile, the United Nations says nearly 12 million people in Syria are dependent on humanitarian aid for survival. UN spokesman Jens Lierka says eight years of war have turned Syria into one of the biggest protection crises in the world. Despite an overall reduction of violence in some areas, people continue to be exposed to brutality every day. Women, children, adolescent girls, older people, widows, and female-headed households and people with disabilities face distinct protection risks and have specific needs. The UN says more than 80 percent of Syrians live below the poverty line. The United States has imposed sanctions against a number of Venezuelan officials aligned with embattled President Nicolas Maduro. The special U.S. representative for Venezuela is Elliot Abrams. Maduro supporters that uh, abuse or violate human rights steal from the Venezuelan people or undermine Venezuela's democracy are not welcome in the United States. The new measures are part of an ongoing U.S. effort to pressure Maduro to step down. The United States and dozens of other nations have recognized opposition leader Juan Guaido as interim president. There has been a political shakeup in Sudan, where President Omar al-Bashir has stepped down as chairman of the ruling party. The National Congress Party that enjoys a sweeping majority in Parliament made the announcement after weeks of popular protests against Bashir's rule. The party says the leadership role, at least temporarily, goes to Deputy Chairman Ahmed Haroun and that a new president will be chosen at the next general convention, though no date has been set. Thousands of Algerians took to the streets across the country after Friday prayers to protest President Abdul Aziz Bouteflika's bid for a fifth term. Eighty-two years old today... Bouteflika suffered a stroke in 2013 and has not been widely seen since. In Algiers, young and old call for a free and democratic Algeria. Bouteflika has led the country since 1999. The presidential election is scheduled for April 18th. U.S. Taliban peace talks are set to resume today in gutter after a two-day break. The immediate goal is fleshing out details of a draft agreement that both sides are hoping could set the stage for promoting a settlement to the conflict through an all-Afghan peace process. A senior Taliban official tells VOA the withdrawal of all U.S.-led foreign forces from Afghanistan will allow Afghans themselves to peacefully work to end years of hostilities. Gene Randall, VOA News.